Hello, welcome to another module of this course, Analog Circuits. Uh, in the previous lecture, we had covered uh, the various uh, non-idealities of an op-amp. In this module, we will be covering what are known as Bode plots. So, Bode plots are a mathematical tool for analyzing the frequency response of various systems, not just uh, analog circuits, they are also used in control systems. And uh, just like transfer functions, which we had studied earlier, which are a tool to analyze the response of linear systems, these are also a tool. But as compared to the transfer functions, which operate in the S domain, the Bode plots always operate in the omega domain. So, let us see what are Bode plots. The definition of this Bode plot is, it is a standard expression for plotting the frequency response of linear time invariant systems. Okay. So, we had already seen what is a linear time invariant system in the uh, previous lecture. Uh, I think we had introduced what is a linear system, but not what is a time invariant system. Time invariant system is a system where an output like this is produced for an input. So, if the system produces, uh, if the input of the system is x t and for that an output y t is produced, then for a linear time invariant system at a for an input x t minus t 1, the output will be y t minus t 1. So, with this in mind, the two important characteristics of a Bode plot is that number 1, it is a standard format It is a standard format for frequency response. It is easy to communicate, you know, if a designer or a person who is analyzing a system wants to see, wants to communicate with another person what is the frequency response, then Bode plot provides a standard format for that. And many common systems produce simple shapes in the plot. So, just by looking at the Bode plot, the response of the system can be predicted. So, let us start with a simple transfer function. Say, we have a transfer function h of s given like this. And so on upon s minus p 1, s minus p 2, s minus p 3 and so on. Now, substitute s equal to j omega, then you get h of j omega is given. So, we are just substituting in place of s with j omega. So, this is given by j omega minus z 1, j omega minus z 2 and so on. 
upon j omega minus p1 and so on. Now, the total angle or if we want to find out the total argument of this h of j omega, then that is the summation of individual angles of each of these factors like this minus the summation of the angles due to each of these factors which I represented like this. Similarly, the total magnitude of this transfer function modulus of h of j omega will be the magnitude of each of these factors okay, divided by the magnitudes of the factors in the denominator. Now, in a Bode plot of course, we plot this magnitude on a log scale. So, this we had already discussed you know while discussing the unity gain bandwidth about plotting on a log scale. The Bode plot what we were plotting there was the Bode plot kind of. So, let us see some examples of how to plot a Bode plot then that will become clear instead of going on explaining about the properties of the Bode plot, it might be better to just consider an example. So, suppose we have a transfer function with a single pole. So, you have h of s is equal to a upon s plus a. So, then the Bode plot is like this. If you plot the h of j omega plot, it will be something like this that suppose this is a. So, till uh, this point the magnitude uh, h of j omega uh, we have the 20 log of this h of j omega. Till this point it will be unity. Okay. Beyond this, if we just draw a straight line which is minus 20 d b per decade and then the so the Bode plot. So, this is these are what we call the asymptotes you know these red lines are the asymptotes. So, we were discussing about these lines. Now, these lines are known as asymptotes. So, these kind of uh, follow the outline of the main plot. These are not the real uh, Bode plots. These lines follow the Bode plots, the actual Bode plots. And by asymptotes, it means what the Bode plots would look like when say the frequency was infinite. So, the real Bode plot that you get is somewhere between you draw it like this, I am using this green pen and at this frequency where the pole is, the magnitude will be less by 3 dB. Okay. So, this is what happens for a single pole case. Now, if you have a single 0, then what happens?
So, in that case just the reverse of what was observed will happen, you will get your this will be plus 20 dB per decay. Okay. Uh, just one correction here, the in the previous uh, slide the magnitude will be 1, but the plot will be 0 on a log scale. So, 0 dB it will be, just wanted to make this correction. Here also we will start uh, from 0 dB okay and then at the zero if we now draw the complete border plot at the zero the magnitude will increase by 3 db okay now in the previous case and in this case we didn't see what happens to the phase plot so this is the magnitude plot let us see what happens to the phase plot so, to draw the phase plot again you draw, so here we are drawing the magnitude of h of j omega, this is omega. Now, at, uh, at suppose this is the a or the frequency, now what you do is uh, you take the points uh, a upon 10 and 10 a. Now, till a upon 10 the phase change will be 0, then you draw the asymptote like this and like this. So, then the total uh, Bode plot will be something like this or the phase plot will be something like this. Similarly, for this case also, uh, if we are trying to draw the phase plot, what you do is first you plot the log of omega, the h of j omega, okay. then uh, at b you plot your so we have this is b this is b upon 10 and this is 10 b so you your plot will start i just want to add something in the previous plot so this is uh, 0 and it will end at minus 90 degree okay so your phase change will be from 0 to minus 90 degree in this case, the phase change will be from 0 to plus 90 degree. So, if this is plus 90 degree. So, you plot the two ends 0 and 90 degree and then draw a line from this b upon 10 to this 10 b and your real Bode plot, these are the asymptotes by real I mean the actual Bode plot not the asymptotes uh, will be something like this. So, this is the phase plot. Now, suppose you have two poles present, then what happens? If you have two poles present, then the magnitude plot becomes something like this. instead of a minus 20 dB per decade, it will be a minus 40 dB per decade. So, your transfer function in this case is like this. You have two poles at minus a.
and your actual Bode plot will be something like this. There will be a 6 dB fall here. Now, this 3 dB and I hope you understand what is the significance of this 6 dB and 3 dB. 3 dB means the magnitude becomes half at this point and 6 dB means it becomes one fourth. Okay. Okay. And uh, how will the phase plot look like? The phase plot will be very similar to that single pole case, except that the variation is now between 0 and minus 180 degree or plus 180 degree whichever. And so, just like the previous case you have A, A upon 10, you have 10 A. will be like this. Okay. Let us take a further more concrete example that will illustrate all the concepts that we have discussed so far more better. So, we have a transfer function given like this. First thing you note that at s equal to 0, that is the dc, this magnitude of h of j omega is equal to 1. Okay. So, it will start from a 0 dB line. Now, if we take the you know the magnitude of this, it will appear something like this. Let me write it in a different way. So, this will be like 1 plus s over 1 upon, if I divide uh, you know both the numerator and denominator by 10 raise to power 4, then it will be 1 plus s upon 10 multiplied by 1 upon s upon 10 raise to 3. Okay. So, then 20 log of h s will be equal to 20 log of 1 uh, plus 20 log of 1 plus s over 1. Okay. And then minus this, this component is from the here the numerator and from the denominator you have minus 20 log of 1 plus s upon 10 minus 20 log of 1 plus s upon 1000. So, now how does this component look like? So, this looks like a straight line. How does this component look like? This looks like a at s equal to or omega equal to 1. Then this component looks like this at omega equal to 10 and this component also looks like this at omega equal to 1000. So, this is minus 20 dB per decade, this is also minus 20 dB per decade, this will be plus 20 dB per decade and this is 0 dB per decade. Okay. We will of course, see the phase plots later on as we progress, uh, but let us see how it looks like how the overall uh, Bode plot looks like. So, Bode plot will be start from 0 
d b this is modulus of h of j omega in d b this is log of omega. So, we first start with 0 and at this point we note that uh, so we are first of course plotting only the asymptotes at this point there is this minus 20 at uh, omega equal to 1 there is this fall due to s equal to the uh, I beg your pardon there is a uh, there is a rise sorry not this it is a rise at omega equal to 1 there is a plus 20 d b per decade rise due to the presence of the 0 and then at omega equal to 10 there is a fall okay and then again at omega equal to 1000 there is a fall so how does the whole thing look like so if we plot the whole asymptotes it will be like we go till here for 0 db per decade then at this point there is a rise plus 20 db per decade and due to this Z a pole at omega equal to 10 rise which should have been like this instead it became flattened and then from this point due to this minus 20 db per decade so this is again minus 20 minus 20 okay and it is a flattened further okay like this so then the overall Bode plot looks something like this. Like this. And so this is the magnitude plot. How will the phase plot look like? say we are starting from 0 here this is minus 90 this is plus 90 okay this is omega equal to 1 this is omega equal to 1 by 10 this is omega equal to 10 this is omega equal to 100 this is omega equal to 1000 and this is omega equal to 10 raised to 4. So, the due to the numerator okay, we will have. So, let us first draw the asymptotes as I said in order to identify the asymptotes at omega equal to 1 where there is a 0. So, you first identify omega equal to 1 upon 10 and omega equal to 10 and then draw the first asymptote. So, uh, it should start increasing from omega equal to 1 upon 10. Then you see that there is a uh, there is a pole at omega equal to 10. So, that means if there is a pole at omega equal to 10, then there must be a fall starting from starting from omega equal to 1 to omega equal to 100. Okay. Then at omega equal to 1000, there is another 0. So, that means there must be another fall starting between between omega equal to 100 and omega equal to 10 raised to the power 4. So, if we start plotting this whole thing, how will it look like? So, it will look like something like this like this it goes till omega equal to 1 okay now at omega equal to 1 because of the other pole present here it becomes flattened here okay it goes all the way till omega equal to 10 from omega equal to 10 there is a fall okay because of this pole and then again it starts continuing all the way till omega equal to 10 raised to power 4. So, overall the total uh, 
phase plot will be something like this. Of course, nowadays it is very easy to make these plots using a computer based program like MATLAB, uh, but still these were some methods uh, which were used in olden days and still serve a lot of purpose, these hand calculations. So, with that we end this module, thank you.